Hello and welcome back to My Safety Hub, your go-to source for all things health and safety. My name is Dylan Stein and welcome back to another weekly review session. Before we head into our weekly review content, I just have an exciting legal update for you guys. There are three updates that took place last week, the first being the general safety regulation update. There have been changes to regulations 2, 13 and 14. The physical agents regulations have been promulgated and will come into effect 18 months from promulgation, which is set to be September 2026. These regulations will be replacing the environmental regulations for workplaces. And lastly, we have the noise exposure regulation that has been promulgated and will also come into effect 18 months from promulgation, which is again September 2026. These regulations will be replacing the noise induced hearing loss regulation. You can download all three of these bills from the comment section down below. Now that being said, let's welcome back Okut Furi. Okut, welcome back. Tell us, how was your week? Uh, so far, so good. Um, yeah, excited for a couple of things for my safety hub. Uh, so watch the space, but but all good in, in your on your side. No, also very well, thank you. Uh, big things for my safety hub, as you've mentioned. If you guys haven't seen the competition video we set out last week Wednesday, please go and do yourself a favor and watch that video. There's some really cool initiatives that I think you guys would like. Um, so yeah, please go and have a look on that video. But that being said, we are back for another weekly review session. Uh, this week's topic is overhead cranes. And as we know, overhead cranes, things with them can go very good or very bad, depending on uh, obviously how you look at it. I've got four videos lined up for us, so without further ado, let's have a look at the first one. Right, okay, so pay attention to this gentleman and this load over here. Why is he directly underneath the load? All right. That's not a good idea. Oh, my word. No, that's, why you, that's why you never stand under a suspended load. I mean, that's just seriously a bad idea. All right, so rule number one there, as you've now rightfully mentioned, never stand under a load. But why do you think that load failed? What could have gone wrong here? Well, it could have been a number of things. Uh, that The slinging could have been poorly done. Maybe the slings themselves have been damaged or they haven't been tested, load tested. Um, but I mean, just, just by looking at the video and, and noticing the gentleman standing underneath the suspended load, there's, there's definitely a few things that they need to look at here. Um, but yeah, there, there could have been a number of reasons why, why it actually fell. Definitely. One of the key things for me and one of the biggest questions I have asked myself while looking at this video is, was load testing conducted? You know, load testing is a legal requirement that needs to be done annually for all lifting equipment that can pick up more than 750 kilograms. But that does not exclude your lifting tackle. And we've seen this time and time again where the crane itself has been load tested, but the lifting tackle associated with that crane hasn't been load tested. Now, good practice here is that all your slings, your wire ropes, your eye bolts, etc. need to be tested at least once every three months and they need to be color coded accordingly. And by the looks of this video, I don't see any signs of any lifting equipment, load tests or color codes and so forth. So I definitely think this was equipment failure from a sling perspective. So what I would suggest doing here is going to the employer and telling you, hey, we need to implement these load testing once every three months to prevent this from happening. Because then we know exactly the type of gear we're working with is in good working order. Mm. All right. So a narrow escape from that gentleman over here. Let's have a look at the second video here. So pay attention to the kiln on the overhead crane and look at the size difference of this. So imagine how big that kiln is. We can see it didn't unhook. Yeah. And there we go. down it goes. And look at the amount of molten metal, I assume it's molten metal, that has been spilt and the explosion that took place from that. 
This for me is a catastrophic failure that could end up hurting a lot of people in this situation. So we, could, we can now obviously see that this hook didn't unhook from the kiln properly. Do you think there was a better way of approaching this? Well, I mean, just verification of the task. If you follow your procedure properly, uh, you know, to make sure that everything is either hooked or unhooked, uh, you know, at the point of contact, just go through it again and double check. Make mm. sure that, that you apply that procedure. And if you do, if you go through your checklist uh, in this process of work, then this shouldn't happen. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a haste in, in the activity, but uh, yeah, just double check and make sure that everything's in, in order before we start moving the equipment. Agree. And my opinion is there was no supervision. There was nobody looking at that load and making sure that, as you now said, the load itself was unhooked properly from that overhead crane. So I think this was a bit of a rush job. I think supervision was thrown out the window because this might be a routine task. I assume that it was if we look at the setup of this factory. So complacency was the downfall of this particular task over here. Yeah. Because things that someone does a thousand times, they think, oh, nothing can go wrong. I've done this a thousand times. And then it all leads up to this. It's like the Swiss cheese model that you've explained in your Monday video. So again, if you guys haven't seen the Swiss cheese video, it's an excellent example of how control measures fail or how they line up to have a failure like this. So go and watch that video if you haven't done so already. All right. Luckily, from this instance, I can see that nobody was harmed. It even says that nobody was harmed, so that is good. Let's have a look at the next one. So again, pay attention to this gentleman over here and the size of the equipment that they are using. <laughs> that, that, that was a shock for me the first time I saw that. I was like, the magnitude of that load that fell down there. That is a massive engine if we look into the proportion of the guys standing mm -hmm. here in this load. So again, here we can see equipment failure very similar to our first video. And again, load test for me is the first thing that stood out okay. here. Um, in your opinion, okay, what do you think happened? Well, I mean, you, you said it, it's, it's equipment failure, but mm. I think it just highlights the fact that if, if we're going to be working with uh, heavy loads or equipment or machinery uh, of any nature, you know, maintenance and making sure that, that the equipment's always in good working order, uh, whatever piece of the equipment it may be, it's it's absolutely essential. And again, when I watch this this now this load being dropped, um, if if that gentleman wasn't paying attention, he, he wouldn't be with us anymore. So very very lucky to escape with his life there. But you know, having having a set maintenance schedule and really making sure that your equipment is really in top notch working order, especially if you're doing this type of work, uh, is absolutely essential. I agree, but let's flip this on its head and let's say that load testing was done. One of the other things that we see very often is, yes, the crane and the associated lifting tackle have been load tested, but the actual item that they want to pick up with that specific gear is of a higher rated capacity than the equipment that has been provided to these employees. You know, how do you know how much that engine weighs? I surely don't. How do you justify the weight of that particular item versus the load capacity of your slings or your overhead crane? And that's a big problem that we face. And I want the guys to take note of this, that if you want to lift something, you must be very, very sure of the capacity of your load versus the safe working load of your overhead crane and slings. Because yes, they can be load tested, they can be brand new out of the box, but if you're load is heavier than what your lifting tackle can pick up you will have a failure like this and i think this is what happened with this particular clip over here i, I don't think it was a load test but i do think the load was heavier than they anticipated which is my opinion on this all right with that being said let's go on to our last video here very similar setup as to the previous one so pay attention to the suspended load on the right So I just want to rewind there very quickly. Look at where this breaks. If we have a look on the block itself. So that's not the sling. The sling is intact. That's the actual block of the crane that failed there. Mm -hmm. So in this regard, 
I believe load test was a problem and maintenance of this specific machine because look at the state of this boom crank right this looks very worn for me and this probably is very old you know so housekeeping around the area as well as maintenance of this machine in my opinion wasn't done very effectively which is why we saw the actual equipment fail there what is your opinion on this one well i mean it's making sure that that your machines and your equipment is is fit for purpose um you know rather go through the process of spending the money to buy a machine that's up to date or spending the money in making sure that your machines and the different or various parts of it are well maintained and looked after, then having to sit with a serious accident, the one gentleman there could have been crushed, um, and then you, you're going to have a problem because the entire facility would have to come to a standstill, uh, various inspectors would have to get involved with uh, an investigation, uh, you're looking at probable criminal liability, so, so many headaches that can be avoided by simply doing the things and investing in safety rather than waiting for the incident to happen and then doing something about it. And now the machine has to be repaired in any case. It, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, very reactive approach there as well. So okay, we've now looked at four very interesting crane fail videos over here. And the key takeaway for me is making sure that your equipment is well maintained, making sure that you have a safety management system that can track and trace load tests of these various lifting tackle, your slings, your fiber ropes, etc. And obviously having a displayed safe working load on your overhead crane or boom crane in this example and making sure that you know what the capacity is of the item that you need to pick up to prevent things like this happening. So in closing thoughts, Orchid, do you have any final thoughts for us on overhead cranes? Well, we've got to accept the fact that um, gravity is not going to go anywhere. It's going to be a, an initial, as, as an energy source. So we have to make sure that if, if we're going to be working with this type of equipment, that we follow procedures, maintain the equipment, make sure that everything's fit for purpose and train, educate, uh, mm -hmm. you know, create awareness with the individuals where there's a suspended load, uh, that they shouldn't be moving so close to the load, especially in the, in, in the last video, uh, where there were a number of individuals moving close to the load itself uh, and address that as quickly as possible. Have regular toolbox talks, proper SOPs and, and take it from there. I fully agree. So remember, gravity is always a factor with overhead cranes. But unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for, for today. And as always, stay safe, stay inspired. And until next time, take care. Cheers.